Okay, today I'm going to talk about highest common factor and lowest common multiple, also known as HCF and LCM. Some of you may understand HCF as greatest common divisor, which is GCD basically. So there are two methods to find the GCD and HCF, they're the same thing. The first one is by Euclidean algorithm, which I'm not going to cover because this is not tested in secondary school syllabus, in Singapore at least. So if you're looking for how to use the Euclidean algorithm, then this video is not for you. I'm going to focus on how to solve this using prime factorization. So for prime factorization, there are two ways you can look at it. The first is my preferred method, of course. So what I have to do is, let's say I have two numbers, 48 and 60. You have to find the highest common factor first. Just divide this, like, dividing, okay, by 2 first. Because 2 is a common prime factor. So you divide by a common prime factor first, okay? 2 is the easiest one. Because they're both even numbers. As long as they're even, they can be divided by 2. So they're both still even numbers, 2. 12, 15. So here, uh, you can't divide by 2 any further, but you can divide by 3. Get 4 and 5. So at this stage, I can no longer divide by any number. My HCF is simply 2 squared times 3, which is 12. Okay, now what about LCM? LCM is just the product of this times the remainder. That's all. So it's just 2 squared times 3 times 4 times 5. 240. Okay? What if there's a third number? So third number is where things get a little bit tricky for LCM. For HCF, it's still the same. So you don't have to worry about that. So let's say I add on 30. Now I can still divide by 2. That's no problem. 24, 30, and 15. I can't divide by 2 anymore, but I can divide by 3. 8. And then this is 10, 5. At this stage, there's no longer a common factor between these three numbers, right? Amongst these three numbers. So, HCF, I'm done. Easy. It's just 2 times 3. That's 6. What about LCM? Now, the method is slightly different. You cannot just say, oh, 2 times 3 times 8 times 10 times 5. No. You have to look at the subgroups of these three numbers. So, for example, 8 and 10 is a subgroup, right? 8 and 10, I can still divide by 2. But what about 5? Five? 5 I cannot divide by 2. Anything that cannot divide by this number here, you just copy and paste it. Don't touch it. Don't do anything to it. Just copy and paste. Now, 4, 5, 5. So 5 and 5 obviously can be divided by 5, right? So 4, I don't touch it. 5 divided by 5 is 1, similar to here. Now here I've reached the end because I can no longer divide any two numbers, right? So I'll say it's just the product of these numbers here, 2 squared times 3 times 5 times 4, which you should find, if you press into calculator, you should get 240, again, okay? So this is how you use this method. The second method is similar. Now, let's say I have 24 and 60. So 24, you just express in index notation, also known as product of prime factors. So to find that, you just do this thing again, but for one number only. So 12 divided by 2 again, I guess 6 divided by 2 again. So I'm done. So 24 is 2 cubed times 3. 60, okay, it's just... Okay, I'll use a smaller number, easier. 18 is 2 times 3 squared, okay? Now, to find HCF, you have to take any common pairs they have. So they have one common pair of two, right? Two here and two here. And they have a common pair of three. So the answer is six. Okay, I will express this out individually so you get a clearer idea. It's two times two times two times three. This is two times three times three. Can you see I have this? One, two, one, two. 1, 3, 1, 3. So the answer is 2 times 3. What about LCM? It's simply 2 times 3, or the common pairs you have, right? Multiplied by the remainder. So it's 2 times 3, times 2 squared, times 3. Okay? So pretty straightforward, it's going to be 72. 
Now, what if there are three numbers? So, I'm not really go go through three numbers because you don't really need to know this method for three numbers, okay? This method is useful if you're asked to find a number k such that 18 times k is a square or a cubic number, okay? So, I will talk about these in the next video where I'll go through some common questions. So... I'm just going to end it here now because I don't want this to get too long and dry for you guys. But please stay tuned to my next video. I will definitely go through maybe two or three questions. And that's all for today. Thank you.